Hey lovely mamas, we are back with Essential Talks, episode number two. I'm so excited to bring you this episode and it is with Zoe, who's the founder of Move Through, a platform that's created for parents going through the parenthood journey. I know we need that support. When it comes to sleep routines, when it comes to just finding yourself again, Move Through is the perfect platform for that. And it's not just for mamas, this one is actually for fathers too. So I hope you stay tuned, listen to how Move Through came about, and here's Zoe's personal journey to how she blends motherhood, parenthood, and and just life as a mother and a business owner. I hope you enjoyed this one and remember don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm so excited to hear your opinion on this one. All right, take care. So hi Zoe, thank you so much for joining me. Really excited to have you on this uh, episode of Essential Talks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to chat. I thought we'll start with some like quick fire questions yeah. um, just to get warmed up. Coffee or tea? What's your fame? um I love coffee but I have about five cups of tea a day and then just like one coffee is my main treat oh wow a little boost (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah we all need it sometimes um okay next one what was your first ever job do you remember yeah I was a shop girl I worked in a bag shop and then I also was a lifeguard so that was oh wow lifeguard so boring to be honest (laughs) because you just sit there all day yeah I can imagine you must be a good swimmer though I mean you must be obviously (laughs) I used to be all right yeah (laughs) okay cool um and at last if you had the chance to win the Guinness World Book of Records what would you like to be put up for and why well I think such a cool one would be running the fastest 100 meters or something like that like yeah. if you can just run so fast you know sometimes like when you look at Mo Farah or people like that and they've done the marathon in two hours and you're like it literally takes me over double the time that it's taken him I haven't even attempted True. a marathon so I think it'll probably take me days <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool to be like the fastest runner would be wicked yeah. I think no definitely I agree yeah but yeah I wouldn't even know where to start with running I, I get like shin splints when I try Oh yeah, they're painful. I've had those before. Yeah, so I just thought never again. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> That's fine. Everyone has different things. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but thank you so much, as I said, for joining. Really excited to, you know, find out more about your journey and about your businesses. Because um obviously I know you you have multiple, I guess. So you do Sunday Lux and then you've got another one which I won't introduce. I want you to introduce. So maybe let's start off there actually. So let's Tell us about this new business that you've you've launched um, and what the inspiration is behind it and just a bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm Zoe. I have a two-year-old um, and that's it. And I started Move Through, I launched it about three months ago and it's essentially, um, well, just to take you a little bit on the journey we had our child we we've been together for years and years we were quite well set up we already had our house like we were doing like quite well so we were like oh you know everyone does it it'll be fine we'll just go for it and then the first year we were just shocked at how difficult it was um both in terms of like like physically for me um and mentally I guess in terms of our relationship um then with like work and juggling the child and everything so we were just extremely shocked at how hard it was and we researched loads to see like how we could sort it out and everything that we researched was just about how to take care of the baby and um there didn't really seem to be that much in terms of taking care of the parents so we basically threw money at the problem and invested in loads of coaches for different areas um so like pts and therapists um and all different things like that really to to see like what we could do to make ourselves feel better and like you know we thought get back on track um but then as this journey sort of like continued we've realized that you know, it's not really about getting back to the old version of ourselves. It's about like, we're just both completely different now in like a g- great way. Uh, so it's, guess it's like, you know, forming that new version of ourselves. Um, so yeah, we did all of that. And then 
I was like, you know, what do you think if we start like a little blog about it or something? Um, and we could both write our points of view of how different things have gone. Um, and it kind of grew from there. So every topic that we write about is from the mum's point of view and the dad's point of view. So it has like both sides of the story, I guess. Um, and then we actually brought on some of the coaches that we used that we found were really good. We brought them on and now they um, sell their services through our site, move through um, to, to try and help other parents basically get through that difficult bit and then come out the other side in terms of like who they want their new identity to be. Mm. No, so that's that's we, it's quite new we just did it yeah a couple of, we just launched it a couple of months ago so yeah so far the uh, feedback's been really good I think a lot of the content um, has been we've had like a lot of feedback on it because so for example like about resentment is one of our topics and usually you just hear the woman's side of the story on it but then because my husband's written a reply to like everything or he's taken the lead on some of the topics it's good if you're a bit worried to bring something up with your partner because you can see like a male's point of view from it or they can see like the female's point of view from it so they get get like a little bit of a gauge before they speak to their partner about it so yeah, yeah. wow that's amazing it's, I guess it's almost like a self-therapy for you guys as well isn't it like you wasn't able to find that for yourselves and you've more or less just created what you needed I guess yeah it's definitely been like therapeutic and and some of the articles were quite hard to write well quite hard to read from the other person you know when um Greg was writing at the beginning how he was like basically staying at work later because he didn't want to come home because it was just stressful at home and you know obviously that's hard to read but uh, it has been like couples therapy for us basically mm -hmm. and I was like well if it helps other people that's fine isn't it is that no I don't mind sharing <laughs> No, no, that's really good and really inspiring that you even had that strength during your journey of sort of, I guess, as you said, finding yourselves and finding your new identity to just basically share this with others as well. So, no, really um, commend you for that. Thank you. Um, I guess going on to like relationship and obviously you're saying it was hard for you guys to um, read certain aspects of the articles that you wrote as well you know when it comes to balancing relationship and your mindset body care etc while also trying to be the best parents that you can and then these businesses how, yeah. how do you even find that balance like where do you even start to sort of search for that balance as well yeah well definitely haven't always got the balance right and definitely in the first year I think it's about sort of finding your feet with everything I think the first year is when it's the biggest change so that's when it is kind of like trial and error a little bit but I guess now that we're through that hardest bit we've we've like set up some non-negotiables for ourselves like individually and then as a family so it would be like for me personally like I know that I want to exercise three times a week I know that you, you know you probably find this as well having my own businesses is great but it can be a bit lonely at times so I know that I need to co-work at least twice a week with other people other founders um and then you know like lots of different little bits like that and then we have some together so you know spending like a certain amount of time together doing like an, an activity as a family not just like watching tv or something but like we've got a running prowls so it might be like going for a run together or you know going for a walk together or doing something you know so now we've set up like certain things that we have to do to keep the balance like right and you know we have like a date night once a month and things like that so that's how we structure it now but then even now even with those things there's still some things that are always like you know a bit higher than others and you have to rebalance them a bit you know you're spending too much time working so you need to you know bring the relationship side up or whatever it might be um but yeah I just have like a little framework of things that I you know we make sure we do all the time yeah. um but in the first year I think it's so hard to do that because you don't know what you need it's only, it's usually unfortunately it's when something gets really bad that you're like oh I've neglected this area so now I need to invest in that mm. it's, it's true it's, it's like you said it's almost kind of like it's like a seesaw almost isn't it like mm -hmm. when you see one area is really really falling and getting low then you're like oh my gosh I need to focus on that area and and I guess it's a shame that sometimes we're not in that mental space at times to even see when that area is dropping it's it's like you said when it gets to like that severe moment when you're like oh my gosh I I need to work out or I need to focus on my mental health because 
I've just let myself just go mentally, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you have anything that you do to keep everything in check? In the beginning, I struggled with my mental health. I struggled with Mm. my identity, with finding my identity. And I think it's like what you said in the beginning when you said it's about finding, it's not about finding our own selves. It's about basically finding, well, adjusting to what we are now, our new identity. And I struggled with that, those two words, new identity, yeah I was trying to basically stick to the old identity um, and my old routine so then when I was trying to fit my little girl into that old routine she physically couldn't fit into that because Mm -hmm. that was just for Jade it was just for me it wasn't for Abigail and Jade yeah (laughs) navigating that whole new you know relationship with my husband and things like that so It took me a while to realise that I can't stick to that old routine. I need to basically adjust to a new one. Um, But I think, like you said, once I got to, unfortunately, that time where I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know, my mental health is really, you know, really impacted now. Um, When I went through, I went through counselling with the NHS and that's Mm -hmm. when I realised, okay, I need to form a new identity, basically adjust to my new identity and form a new routine. Um, Yeah. And not be so hard on myself. So I think that to answer your question is not being hard on myself, like realizing that I can't always get everything that I want to get done in a day. And if I don't, just add it onto my list for the next day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so not being afraid to have extended lists for the next day um, or to yeah. you know, adjust my day to balance, as you said, um, my life and motherhood and the journey. So yeah, just not being hard and being patient, I think for me was. Um, difficult but now I'm in the in the swing of things I think yeah yeah so where are you up to with your how old's your little girl she's two she turned two on Wednesday actually oh. yeah so she's two years old now so I feel like I've kind of got like a, a mini teenager <laughs> oh. exactly. so I guess when it comes to like so we've spoken about balancing relationship etc but then when it comes to like Zoe so like reclaiming just your identity and you yeah. know I think as we've spoken already it's it's difficult I think that's a lot of women can agree that we struggle to find that identity and to reclaim it um so how like in your own experience did you sort of go about finding your identity because you mentioned about adding in you know um, days to exercise and things like that but I mean how did you sort of go about navigating that with motherhood well kind of same as you at the beginning I was trying to go back to my old identity and I was like desperate to like you know snap back and everything I used to you know, go out all the time. Um, And so after a few months, you know, I started my, uh, I've got another business, a loungewear business. And I started back up with that like two weeks after I'd had my baby, you know, so I was trying to still work every day, but with him. And then that was stressful if he needed my attention and I couldn't, you know, pack up my orders and things like that. So I was getting frustrated, but I was like, no, it's fine. I can keep doing it. And then with the, uh, you know, going out at night, it was um, after, you know, about three months, I was like, God, I'm absolutely desperate for a night out. And I've been missing it the whole time I was pregnant. And um, and I went out, went to this really, like, great party. Um, and I got there and I was just like, just not even like, just not having a great time. Like, it wasn't awful. I was just, you know, just wasn't everything that I sort of remembered and every, like, I'd been craving it for so long and it was just fine. And I I thought, oh God, I've just, this isn't me anymore. Not that, you know, I still love the odd night out now and again, but I don't need to be doing it all the time. Um, So so that was like a big thing for me. And then, so I realized that, so that was one part of my identity. And then with the working thing, after it took quite a long time, quite a few months for me to be like, this is, I can't just force my son into my routine like you said so it's just thinking about what I can do that is actually fair to him as well because also as they get older you know they they don't just want to be like doing everything that you're doing you can't just like take them everywhere you do need to be giving them like you know a bit of attention and everything so now I and you know I used to get really frustrated now he goes to nursery if he was sick from nursery then I'd be like oh literally like it's going to be so hard to do my work and look after him whereas now I'm just like that's fine like I'll look after him today and I will not worry about the work I'll add that to tomorrow like you say um 
instead of trying to do both and not doing both very well because you know I'm not giving him what he needs and I'm doing like a rubbish job of my work so now I just am a bit more like not go with the flow because I do I am quite a planned person but just more like accepting that I am actually a mom and you know that comes with different responsibilities um and yeah like now instead of like going on loads of nights out I might go to the pub you know at the weekend in the day with him and then come back by decent times you can put him to bed and then you don't feel rubbish the next morning because you're getting up early you know it's just things like that mm. I definitely don't want to give everything up but it's just like adjusting I guess yeah I think I think that's the main word isn't it adjusting <laughs> and like you said not forcing a situation so yeah like we've agreed adding it to the next day um is is so important and I think for me as well I think it was just realizing that my little one is my main priority yeah and everything else is like around around her so yeah like, like you said if she gets ill and she can't go to nursery because I used to be the same that was literally my just like gold dust the nursery days um and it still is to be fair because it's you know when we can do stuff like this and just yeah ourselves so when that time used to come when she'll get ill I'll be like I'd literally be like oh my god like my heart would sink <laughs> and I feel like we, it's good to be honest in this situation because I think a lot of us feel guilty for feeling that way but yeah. you're not used to obviously with having your first child you're you're obviously not going to be used to having to care for another human being and you know you're you're gonna have to sort of adjust to reprioritizing and and it's not easy for some it definitely wasn't easy for me so yeah yeah. I just think they're just with you all the time aren't they so that's the crazy thing like you know I've been with my partner for a long time but he goes to work he goes out we can both do our own thing whereas you have this child I know it's obvious but I guess I just didn't really think about it before but like they're literally with you all the time like at the weekends he has an hour's nap and the rest of the time he's with us all the time so it's like my god we've got one hour separate from him what are we gonna do in that hour you know it's it's so true like out of the whole day like the eight hours in the day you've literally got an hour some people even have half an hour some people don't even get that and I mean I'm petrified when he drops the nap oh my god I was just about to say that (laughs) I was thinking about to say that. I think that we're going to have to have another session for when I little <laughs> drop their nap. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's just all about adjusting, I guess. But I think even saying that word, it takes so much willpower and so much than just the actual word. Like it's, there's so much behind it, like the mental preparation and, and you know, it does, it takes some time. Um, I do think though, and one of the reasons I set the business up is, I do think you can, I do think it is adjusting and not just accepting and just, you know, letting yourself go completely and making it about them. That's why like the things on our site is, you know, for example, like exercise, how you can, if you're with them, you know, you can do it in the first year all the time, then you can do it, you know, 10 minutes throughout the day instead of like half an hour all at once. And you can do it with your baby or, you know meditation you can do it we've got some that you can like walk walking meditation that you can do with your baby so I think it's not about just we were really and I still feel really strongly about I don't want to just like make everything about the baby and then like let our relationship go let our work go let like my body go stuff like that it's just about how can I still do those things in a different way that isn't going to negatively impact the baby because I'm not like with him all the time or I can do it with him or whatever it is. So how can I keep nuggets of those things in my new life in an adjusted way, rather than just being like, I'm just not gonna do any of that and I'm just gonna do everything for them. It's, it's true. And I think it's important to fill fill our cups as well, isn't it? Mm. It's like that saying, if you don't fill your cup, how are you gonna fill someone else's? You know, you're just gonna have a constant empty bottomless pit where your cup's never been filled and you're just constantly giving and giving. And and like you said, it's like when you mentioned about trying to do both, but not doing both of them well, you know, you're gonna be in that constant state of just giving, but not feeling like you're giving the best of yourself, you know, to to your husband, to your friends and family, to your little one, essentially. So, yeah, so right. to everyone. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> so no, I think that I think that leads us perfectly actually onto the next question, which is about women who want to be in a position where you know they want to focus on their passions, they want to focus on things, whether it's business, whether it's a hobby, etc., outside of 
motherhood you know how do you think they can get to that because I I know for me it took me a while to even get to that position um to even be considering and thinking about doing things like this but you know out of your you know personal experience how how do you think they can get there yeah well I would say you know I think for most people becoming a mum is probably going to be the biggest change that they've ever had in their life so I would maybe view that as a bit of a chance to reinvent yourself and be like you know what kind of woman do I want to be from here because it really is a great chance to do that I know that you know you need to maternity leave is a great time to just you know focus on your baby and everything like that but you are sitting around a fair bit so it is a good chance to think about what you want out of your life and what your passions could be they don't they can be new things you don't have to be things that you've done before it could be something that you want you've always wanted to try um so I think it's a great chance for reinvention and then yeah I just feel like it's a bit of a crossroads because even with work you know I went back to my corporate job um just a few days a week um so then it's like you know what am I going to what do I want my new life to be Mm. you know and then I guess the other thing is with children I feel like they're always changing so it's very easy to get caught up in like the routines and the day-to-day tasks that you have to do every day for them so if you spend a bit of time on yourself and even like some grounding practices or habits or hobbies or something that is for you, then that can basically see you through all of these different changes. Cause it is hard to like, you know, they're sleeping for a couple of weeks, then all of a sudden that changes, then they're like really loving, then they're really like moody towards you. Then, you know, it's just always up and down. Mm-hmm. And that is the reality of it. So that's fine, you know, accept, I accept that. But if there's something that you can have for yourself that you always come back to, then I just feel like that will keep you a bit more grounded. So, for example, if you do want to decide to do your yoga teacher uh, qualification or something like that, then you can make sure that you do a couple of hours every week and that will always be the constant because the rest of your life won't be constant, if you know what I mean. And I think it's nice to have that, as you said, because our life is probably so up and down, up and down. It's nice Mm. to actually implement a bit of structure (laughs) where Mm -hmm. we have set days to do set things for ourselves or set hours for ourselves you know because that probably helps to create a little bit of stability in our minds and in our lives which I'm sure a lot of us miss um so no I think that's that's a perfect so yeah way of doing it definitely oh well thank you so much Zoe I do appreciate you um being in in these sessions um Lastly, how can people find you um, at Move Through? Because um, I think it's such a beneficial platform. So where can we find you? Yeah, sure. So at the moment we're on um, Instagram. Um, it's at Move Through underscore or it's movethrough.co.uk. Um, we add new articles and topics all the time. Um, if any you or any of your listeners want to explore a certain topic just dm me and i'll speak to my husband and see if we've got something to write about or if if other people want to write for us as well other, we've had guest blogs as well so it doesn't just have to be something we've experienced um yeah we just want to open up the conversation really for parents and let them know it doesn't have to be all about the children they need to look after themselves as well <laughs> no and hopefully this will be the start just them listening to this will be a start of them just implementing themselves into their routine lovelies i hope you enjoyed that episode with zoe from move through just like me i hope you're feeling inspired uplifted and it's just also great to have these conversations to know that we are not alone in this parenthood journey so don't forget to check out the move through platform to get more insight and more guidance and don't forget our episodes will be airing on the first of every month so the next one will be the first of february at 8 p.m I look forward to seeing you there. Bye.